Hi, my name is Lawrence from MediaCast and today I decided to create a video to answer one of the most frequently asked questions by our clients, which is, what is the best lens to fit my Blackmagic Studio camera? As you know, Blackmagic Studio camera is using MFT mount and MFT mount is the most adaptable lens mount out there in the market, meaning you can use your Canon or Nikon mount lenses and then just use a, one of the adapters that we always recommend is to use Metabone Speed Booster adapter so you can convert your Nikon mount like in this case from a Sigma 18 to 35 to an MFT mount that can fit our camera. The second option is most of, most of our clients that we talk to around the region they're still, they still have their old uh, studio camera with D4 mount lenses. Now, even if you're using P4 mount lenses, you can still use this. You can take your old camera, take the old lenses out, and then put the camera in your museum and use this for your studio camera by using an adapter like this from PhotoDeox. So this is PhotoDeox, P4 Magic. So again, that converts your uh, P4 mount lens to MFT. That's the second option. Now we go to MFT, MFT option. So the first options for uh, MFT would be analog, or sorry, uh, manual MFT lenses. So this is one example from Voigtlander. Now you can use your MFT, your manual MFT lenses, again for the studio camera. Of course, you lose some of the functionalities, which I will be discussing on our next videos. But for now. Our focus is different electronic MFT lenses. So today, I'll be showing you my setup first. So I have a studio camera right here. And uh, since studio camera doesn't come with any recording functions, I'm recording everything on my Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. All right, so I have my SDI out, send it to my recorder, and I'm lighting my scene, that's my scene, I'm lighting it up using an ICANN LED light I have right here. So if you notice, my camera sensor is about two meters away from my subject. We'll be trying different lenses. So we have a 15 millimeter f1.7. This is the fastest of all the lenses, lenses that I will be trying today. So that's a 15 millimeter f1.7. I also have the wide option which is a 7 to 14 millimeter f4 I also have what's attached to my camera right now is what is this <laughs> sorry it's a 12 to 35 f2.8 which is roughly the equivalent of 24 to 70 f2.8 if you're working with full frame lenses and I also have a 35 to 100 f2.8 Again, an equivalent of 70 to 200 f2.8, again for full frame lenses. And lastly, I have this, the 45 to 175 millimeter f4 to f5.6. So it's a variable aperture right here. So, so I'll be showing you the lowest focal range and then I'll show you the maximum focal range and I'll put it at f4 and I'll use autofocus or auto iris to let the camera decide if we need to bring on the aperture or not. So let's look at that. Okay, let's try this. This is a 12 35 millimeter f2.8. Right here is a 12 millimeters. You have to take note that there's a crop factor that we have to consider. So you're looking at about 2.8 crop factor and this is 35 millimeter f2.8 if I press auto iris it's now set at its maximum aperture it's set wide open at f2.8 now let's try the 35 to 100 f2.8 I'll just press autofocus so that's your 35 millimeter view so if I zoom it in all the way to 100 millimeters I press the autofocus and now it's right there. So that's 100 millimeters. 
again let's press auto iris but I guess that's the maximum iris that we can have right here there's no change so yeah that's the 35 to 100 millimeter now let's try the 50 millimeter f1.7 let's press autofocus and you can see that right now our highlights are all blown up because we're at f1.7 this is a prime lens so I cannot change my focal range in here so if I press auto iris now that brings it down to f2.6 as you can see you get a wide angle shot and at the same time you have a fast lens that can go up to f1.7 so those people who are complaining about low light performance for the camera what I always say is you should use the proper lens for your purpose the next one is the 7 to 14 mm f4 this is at 7 millimeters now I'll press autofocus focuses it right now we are set at f4 let's zoom it in let's zoom it in at 14 millimeters and if I press autofocus then there you have it if I press auto iris it cannot do anything else because it's at f4 it's the widest aperture available for the lens and last but definitely not the least this is the 45 to 175 with variable aperture from f4 to f5.6 this is it at 45 millimeter and if I press autofocus one good thing about this 45 to 175 is that it is a power zoom model which means I can use a Lancy remote control so I can smoothly zoom in using a Liebeck ZFC 5HD it's zoomed in at 175 millimeters it's at f5.6 now I press autofocus and voila it's there if I press auto iris for this it's at f5.6 because again we're maxed out at 175 mil that's the widest aperture that you can have at 175 millimeter Here's a closer look of the Panasonic MFT lenses we've just quickly tested. For more information, you can email me at lawrence at mediacastsys.com. Thank you for watching. This is Lawrence of Mediacast once again. See you guys on our next video.